Hi, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thanks so much for stopping by. This is going to be another two-part series, and it's gonna give you a glimpse into how David and I work together with coming up with the ideas for our terrain and scattern and other little bits of things that we use for our campaign. The first part is gonna show you a fun little concept he's come up with, and the second part is going to be my painting that concept for you. So without further delay, take a look. Uh, I hate to tell you, this is pretty much all you're gonna be seeing of me or hearing of me, so don't be surprised by the man hands and the deep voice. Not me, it's David, he really does exist. Thanks so much for stopping by. Any questions, down below as always. Have fun with it. See you later. So today we're gonna to take a look at how to make some cave style ramps that I made. And I thought there's a couple of nifty things on these that are interesting and worthwhile to make a new video on. Uh, first, I tried hitting, if you can see here, some cutouts to the side. So what I, that allows you to do is, is, if you can see, I'll move these out of the way. It allows you to make some distance to jump up over if you've got other ramps. So if you had a full ramp, like let's say this guy, see how that's filled all the way through? Can't quite get to where you're trying to go. Same thing with this one over here. So I wanted to make these cutouts to be able to get there. So we'll show you how to do those. Uh, the issue also is I don't have really thick foam, two, three inch thick foam. So I wanted to be able to do it with just the normal one inch thick stuff that I can get from the store without having to buy specific foam in order to pull it off. Then the last thing I wanted to try, or two other things I wanted to try to show. One is the balancing issue. So you can see this guy is capable, okay, maybe not with the mini on top, but it's capable of balancing on its own. How we did that is we included a significant amount of weight into the bottom here. So what that does is it allows you to be able to branch it without it flopping over. So all of these guys have some washers, or screws or fishing weights or whatever. So we're gonna to try to show you how to do that. And then Vanessa's gonna be able to show you the painting technique. And also, if you can kind of make out, there's a little bit of shininess here, that's some glue. And what that allows you to do is, maybe, there we go, to have a mini that'll actually stick in place. Without the glue, this whole thing just slides right down. And then it makes it very difficult if you're playing to actually have your guys make it up the stairs without sliding right down in one shot. So we're gonna start and uh, go through each one of the steps and see where we go. So the first thing that I did, and I'm gonna show you some pictures before and I'll narrate over that, is we glued together a couple of pieces. This is just normal one inch thick XPS foam. And this is, I believe, two inches thick this way. And we've got three layers, so that makes this one three inches thick. This guy, I did five layers just to play around with that, so that's five inches by two inches. And this one, to mess around a little bit, I did three inches wide, and I've got four inches thick. So how I did this is we took some, we tried various types of glue before, and it seems like the best ones to work are either uh, tacky glue will work and also Elmer's glue. So what this one was, it's Elmer's glue and then spread very thin. And I got some pictures that we'll probably be overlaying into this so you can see how that works. So then you stick them together and you gotta clamp it and put some significant force on top of it and you gotta let it wait. Um, I, the last, the first one I did when I made the ones that you saw before, that was about two days and then I ran into problems of it actually still having wet glue and the hot wire not dealing with wet glue too well. So this, I, I'd say wait at least four or five days with some weight on it. Um, these I think have been sitting in the basement for about two weeks, so they should be good. So what we're going to do now is, and I'll only do it for a couple of them, but we want to start by getting a rough diagonal. So we're going to go tip to tip and again this is rough. So you can either freehand it or for this I'm just going to draw a little bit on here and we're going to try to cut right about through there. Now this will give you a wedge with about the right angle. So if you wanted to see this is three inches tall and this piece is about nine inches wide. So that gives you kind of a three by nine by three. So you're, you're going to have a decent slope that the minis are actually going to be able to stay on. If you try to do it too short, you're going to go up too high, and even with the glue, they're going to come sliding down. So all of these pieces 
are about nine inches long. So obviously the big one is gonna have a little bit higher of a slope, but you can play around with it and see what you wanna do. Now I've got one of these guys. If you've got a, you know, the fancy expensive table, that'll work too. But for me, this is what works and I like it because I can get a little bit of wrist action going. So what we're gonna do is just make a straight cut through way up. Maybe. There we go. Alright, so I'm trying to keep my wrist fairly straight here while we're working our way through. I would definitely say go nice and slow, especially when you hit the transition layers from layer to layer. If you've got a little bit of a thick glue pocket, it's going to slow down. So you got to not yank it. Just slowly work your way through. Gently nudge. Yep. And there we go. And you've got a nice slope here. Now you can see a little bit, you've got some lines from layer to layer. But once we go through and you do some painting and you do some other stuff, you're going to kind of clean those up. You can also see there's a little bit of irregularity as I glue them together. That's fine. We're going to show you how to clean that up also. So the next step is we've got one line. Now if you wanted to have that as we showed before, you could, but then you can't really overhang anything. So what I did to get maximum value out of it was gave it a couple of inches to have a good base and then I made another line, let's say about here-ish. And you're actually getting nested ramps inside each other. Okay. Now we're cutting through again. Again, we're trying to keep it fairly steady. Work our way through, find the transition layer. And work our way up and out. And then, so if you've got this line. Now you can see right away it falls over. So this is where we have to eventually get a little bit more weight behind it in order to hold it up. But now. You have two ramps, and if you really wanted to, you can make another slice right out of here, and you end up with three little ramps as you're going up. So, then the next step will be, once you've got this done, let's say we take this piece. Now we want to make it a little bit more appropriate for the environment. So just to keep it nice and flat here, because then we'll texture that and put the glue lines on this side. But on the sides, we want to kind of wiggle it up so it looks more like natural rock. And this is where I really like being able to have the handheld unit. So as I'm gonna go through, let's see if I get this, I'm gonna kinda of wiggle my hand back and forth a little bit. You want some up and down, up and down movement this way, you want a little bit of back and forth and in and out, kinda of see if you can get about three degrees of freedom as you're going through. And that's gonna kinda of, kind of help sell that this is rock. So let's get this guy heated up. All right, and now I'm going through this way. And this is also gonna clean up some of those wiggly edges where it doesn't necessarily line up. So you're gonna lose a little bit of your width. So remember before we had two inches? So you're gonna do a little bit off and a little bit off, so maybe you end up with like one and three quarter inches. But it's still gonna be pretty good. And then the look is definitely worth it when you can see it like this. All right, so we're gonna flip over, do the other side the exact same way. And you can decide how much you wanna do your wiggling and in and out and sort of pivot back and forth. You gotta kinda of get a feel to it. You can do a whole bunch of little wiggles like that, or you can make them pretty big. You can be more dramatic. If you get some real pivots like this, you're gonna lose a little bit more surface area but then it may make it look a little nicer. And we're done again. Pop it right off, and you have sort of a rough stone texture there. Now, something else that I've done, you don't have to do, it depends on which you like. If you're making, instead of doing caves, if you wanna make it sort of ice, which would fill in quite nicely, I'd leave the edges as they are. If you're doing a cave, Normally old stone doesn't really meet at 90 degrees. 
So that's where it's best to kind of come in and lop off the edge just a little bit. So if again we take our wire, come in here, and you kind of get a little bit of a wiggle. Again, we're losing a little bit of surface area, but you're probably pretty good still. And you can see how much we're taking off. It's not too much. You kind of wiggle, and if you come out, it doesn't all have to come out in one piece. And if you don't have a hot wire cutter, some folks, you may be able to do this with a knife. I've tried the knife, it just didn't work out as well for me. All right, so we let that cool. Pull this off. And you have this little bit of an edge, beveled edge. So if you look at it, here is the not beveled edge, here's the beveled edge. And definitely when this gets painted, this cutout, you can do a slightly different color than you would on the sides and the front, and it's going to show it off a little bit more. So, all right, then the next step, I'm going to go ahead and cut these, and I'm going to try to work my way through the rest of these and show you how it's done. So, the other interesting thing that I wanted to go over real quick was how do we get these darn things to not flop over? Because right now, it doesn't work. So obviously, if you have the big long one, the full triangle, it's solid. But I kind of liked having these cutouts. It gives you a little bit of space. You can even put a couple of these together and it forms a bridge and you can walk underneath of it. So the problem is, it flops. So how we fix that, as we showed in the other ones, is you get some weight back there. I've got two big washers that I stuck in and that was about enough mass. I'd say get whatever things that weigh stuff that you have in your house that you can deal without uh, and see what you can do. So for this case, I'm gonna try to get another couple of these big washers into here. Now what I did, or I'm going to do, is you're gonna have to dig out some space because if you just glue the washers on top, it's gonna wiggle back and forth, it's not gonna sit nicely. So you wanna basically countersink them in. What I did is I had just have a spade bit, something like this, it's one inch wide, or you can just kind of stick it and you say, yeah, that's about the right size. Um, some other options, if you don't want to use washers, for some things I've just used screws. You get another, you know, a couple of big fat ones and you get them in. Doesn't quite have the same weight as the washer, but it's an option. Or you could use something like just scrap bars that you might have around, that would fit. Or fishing weights. And if you're gonna do something like this, I would find a normal screw drive, uh, normal drill bit that's about the same size, kind of measure them up like this, a little bit bigger doesn't hurt, and then just drill it in. One thing to keep in mind is your depth. So you've got a nice surface here, you don't wanna screw it up by shoving a drill bit through the top of it. So take a look on the side and figure out where you can put them in. So obviously if I stick it down here, you can see I'm gonna be punching through the top before I can get it properly countersinked. So I gotta kinda of move it out a little bit. So that would have plenty of room if I were to attack it at that point. And the same thing with my spade bit, because you can see it's got the spiky part on the top, I really wanna make sure when I'm doing it that I'm measuring it out, and you gotta kinda of move it almost to the edge here so you've got enough space to dig in a little bit so you've got your countersink and you're not punching through the top. You could use a drill for this, a power drill. It would probably make an ungodly mess and tear the whole thing to pieces. So I've just been using the spade bit by hand. Kind of have to sometimes go back and forth a little bit and it's going to make a giant mess. But you chug your way through. this and you see pieces start coming out and then just kind of go back and forth between making uh, a mark and digging it out and you may be able to kind of dig it out by hand and get it through there and it's a little bit of a grind test grind okay so now that I've made a horrible mess we're gonna look through here, kinda of dig out your pieces, take your washer, press fit it in. Okay, I can definitely get one in there. Now let's see if one is gonna be enough weight to keep us upright. No. So we're gonna to have to get two in here. And fortunately I have more than two. One. 
All right, so now we're gonna try to press fit. Can I get two and it's flush? If we look from the camera, you can see, yep, and I, you can feel, just run your finger over it. Does it feel like it's bumping up? If not, then you're pretty good. Now let's see if two is gonna be enough to keep it upright. Eh, not quite. So we might have to dig this out a little bit more and see if we can get three in there. One, two, three. And it's nice and flush. It's not going anywhere. And it mostly goes. I need to maybe get a little bit more weight in the tip. And oh, then that's... Fishing weight. A fishing weight, a couple of screws, something like that. And for each piece that you get, you're going to have to basically play with it to figure it out. And then it's just hot glue in here, get it all settled up, and you should be good. Something else I did want to show you, and I started playing around with them. So this is a little Neomodium magnet. I've got donuts. I have a couple donuts left. I've been using these for years for various projects. And then we picked up, I think this is 32 of them. These are solid discs, you can see, rather than the donut. Either one of them probably works. These are 32 of them, and I think we got them on Amazon for 10 bucks. Yeah. So it's a good amount. Now watch, if we take, let's say, these are some little stone columns I made for a cave. Now for this, in order to get the right weight, I just shoved a screw right into the bottom. And that kind of helps if it's just sitting there, it keeps it upright and it's not too tough. You get a little bit of a slope and it's still there. Now I glued, use my drill bit, drilled down, sunk in a neomodium magnet and then you see it sticks right on there i can turn it sideways i can turn it upside down i can do whatever i want and it still pulls off pretty easily so i'm not gonna i don't have to worry about damaging the foam but it comes off and also if we look at one of our slopes i've got two of those discs under here and it's pretty well stuck that's a really strong attachment point and if you do have places where you know you want to stick them, you can sink these into the floor, maybe cover them over with a little bit of Mod Podge or something to hide it or just paint. And then all of a sudden you have really cool anchor points. Here he is making his cameo as usual. Hemingway. Give a high seven. Do no!